Hey everybody, Preston Poulter here with Pocket Jacks Comics. Really excited about today. It's a Robotech! I was such a huge fan of this show growing up. I, that theme got me so charged up as a kid. For those of you who don't know, uh, Robotech was a series uh, that true Japanese anime thing kind of uh, turned their nose off at because it was a bit Frankensteinian. Uh, Carl Maquette, an American, who's unfortunately passed away, took three separate Japanese animes that were not in any way related, except they had the theme of machines that would transform into humans. Uh, Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito, and he bound them together to make one American show called Robotech, which had three seasons. So, most of the, the fan reactions dealt with the first season, which was the story with the Macross the original anime, because it had this, this really compelling character. We had Rick Hunter and a love triangle with uh, Min May and then Lisa Hayes, and that, you know, kind of, there, were, there, were, there were characters we really cared about who, who passed away. I, I learned early on, you know, uh, from both that show as well as Star Blazers, the, the very Japanese storytelling technique of making me love someone and then killing them. Spoiler alert, and White Lily, it's gonna get dark. But, uh, all right. Let's, I hope you're a Robotech fan. If not, um, this one's gonna be a little rough because we're picking up kind of in the middle and we're, we're kind of taking the uh, traditional anime, you know, story and we're, we're diverting from it in the comic book. So this is a variation in the middle of the story and, you know, if you're kind of... If you're just not a rope tech person, this is not a good place to start. But, all right, we have our script by Simon and the interior art by Henry Prasetya and Pasquale Colano. And then colors by Marco Lesco. I've seen him do a number of stuff. And lettering by Jim Campbell. And thanks, Martin, for editing. Okay, the story so far. Um... It pretty much follows the traditional Robotech story. SDF, you know, is out there with the residents of Macross Island. It's coming back, you know, it's trying to make its way back to Earth as Entrati are attacking. But then once they get back to Earth, the, the comic book goes in a different direction. So we have, uh... Yeah, so the Earth drives it away, uses the Grand Cannon to drive away the SDF-1. Well, I didn't see that in the show. And uh, the SDF-1 is now moving back to Mars base. A scarred Carl River, Lisa's ex previously reported as KIA, has mysteriously returned. Claudio is viciously attacked by an evil clone of Roy. We're, we're clearly going off the reservation. Uh, the clone was then killed during a space battle with Vermilion Squadron. The real Roy finally managed to escape the clutches of his raptor, Dr. Laszlo Zan. Meanwhile, Britai, Miria, and a handful of Zentradi are rebelling against Dolza and planning to defect to the SDF-1. All right, one element of this story, I, I have, I've read this, the whole comic, uh, well, just this issue, but one element that picking up here is a little weird in comparison to that opening info that we are given is um, the status of Roy, because it's saying, like, the real Roy managed to escape the clutches of his captor, but in the comic book, he seems to be very much working alongside Dr. Laszlo. And so, here are our characters. Uh, Carl Reber, this is K. Yeah, so we, we've we've definitely taken the love triangle and kind of shattered it now that Lisa has an ex. Well, I guess it's an ex-boyfriend. And then there are the Zentradi we know. Britai, I don't. Ritai, what happened to your hair? What happened, man? You need to get, like, uh... You need to join men's club. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or borrow some from Exidor. Or Miria. Uh, or maybe just, you know, there's Dolza. He's, he was always bald. But, uh... Dolz and Ritai are the only, uh... The only Zentradi who are missing hair. So, let's take a look at the graphics. I'm liking this. Uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely... Min May. Min May's got a different look to her here. Um, in comparison to how she used to look. I mean, it's not a bad look. It's just, it's it's not the Min May I'm used to. But, alright, so you see Rick's eyes there? They, um... As they were talking about 
in, in the preview, he's kind of gone blind, but he can still kind of see. Uh, it, it, it's kind of Neo-esque, I guess. He, he kind of gets these visions of... Uh, he sees the world above the world kind of thing. I play with that a bit myself in Guinevere and the Divinity Factory. So he and Minmay are getting along, and here comes Lisa Hayes. Wow, all right. So this character has changed a bit. Uh, in terms of our artistic representation, she didn't used to look like that. Not that it's a bad look, but I mean, Captain on the Bridge, hello. Compared uh, <laughs> how she used to look, that, that that is that is a nice look, sister. I'm, I'm digging it. Um, so things things are going bad. You know, we're picking up at the story where the this massive Zentradi armada. You know, this is. Canon. This massive Zentradi armada has just warped in and is just blowing the crap out of the earth. And they're they're thinking about, oh, it might be time to use the Grand Canon, and that's that's these the storyline along where this story takes place. And that's kind of this episode. Uh, the the one thing that has changed is as as the intro talks about the Vritai is now kind of leading this revolt, including they want to micronize themselves and join the Micronians. And I do love, I just, I, I gotta show you, I love the way, you know, Miriam looks. Let me, let me show you that, because, uh, there's, Anne, there's all this. Yeah, sorry, went a little fast. Just like, hello, like, that is, that, that, that is, if you want somebody to micronize, I think it should be her. Not to mention she was a great pilot. And, going back to the original show, she, could, she marries Max Sterling, and then they have Dana Sterling, who becomes the main protagonist of, of uh, Southern Cross. And then Bree Tye, boy, Bree is missing his hair. Anyway, um... All right, let's, let's, let me walk you through some of the story here of this particular issue. So we got Rick, who, who can see. He's hanging out with Min May. And then Lisa's up on the bridge taking care of... And that always seemed to be one of the elements of the story was that, you know, Lisa was always a more practical one. She was uh, had a military career. She was always worrying about stuff, whereas Min May was just worried about fan things and love and superficial emotions and Lisa Hayes was always like mm. and you know now that I'm I'm older and you know know a bit more about Japanese culture that that may be kind of because the Japanese culture has that slogan of the the nail which stands up must be hammered down you know the slogan of it is not about the individual it's not about pursuing your own interests it's about doing what is practical and what is best for everyone which is personified in Lisa Hayes versus Lin Minmei so Bit of a bit of an interesting take on Japanese culture there, and I, I like it when 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 the Zentradi start to attack. They just start warping in. Oh yeah, here they come! Like I love these images, the ships, the Zentradi, the battle pods, the battle cruisers. Oh, like just the explosions and the fights. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be interested to see where where they take this story, because oh, I like I'm, I didn't realize how much I missed this stuff. But watching those Entrati ships just blow the crap out of stuff, I was like, yes. <laughs> oh, it makes me miss the music. I haven't heard that music in a long while. I have a friend of mine who who bought the whole season and he showed it to to his kid growing up was about to graduate from a and join the Marines. I don't know if one is related to the other. Maybe it is. But, yeah, this this artwork is just stellar. I, I, I really like it, and it's very true to to the original show. Um, oh, and there's, there's Dolza's mothership. This big, ugly, purple abomination. And uh, I, I'm, I'm going to show you Dulza's speech. It's pretty cool. Micronians, I am Dulza, supreme commander of the Zentradi fleet. 
I am wrath, righteous fire come to purge, a uh, contamination that has sullied the master's given gift of robotechnology. What the heck, sir? It's not just on RDF channels, it's everywhere. Los Angeles, California. You have taken what is not yours, made advances not remotely yours to make, Detroit, Michigan, and most unforgivingly turned your clumsy weapons upon my ships. I bid you make peace with whatever gods you worship, for today is the day of judgment. And this is kind of what what this issue is going to revolve around, uh, you know, kind of. And they're, they're they're setting up the shot of the Grand Cannon uh, against Dole's ship, and I'm I'm curious to see where it goes from here. So uh, I'm looking forward to reviewing the next issue after this one. Uh, meanwhile, by the way, uh, my story, White Lily, about the two deadliest female fighter pilots in world history, which definitely borrowed a bit growing up uh, in terms of. As I mentioned, you know, making you fall in love with a character, and then, oh, maybe they're not there anymore. Um, issue 2 is currently up on Kickstarter, so there's a link for that down in the description, as is the credits for the art team. And uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get up to 100 subscribers so that I can change my channel name. And other than that, thank you very much for your time. Take care.